Aloha, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. Today, our topic of discussion is worldwide COVID. Rise up, join the fight, be a hero. I'd like to welcome back David Yonamini and Hayden Daughters, who are the co-founders of the Hero Systems. They are both Oh, they are just full of love and uh, I don't know energy. Every time I walk in there, I just I don't know what to say. But I I've been into their office and I experienced what they want you to experience. So, being that we're on air now, all you got to do is go down to their shop and uh, they're just waiting. They're just waiting to educate the rest of us. But they are both here today to educate educate us about what the world has been experiencing for the last 20 months and to answer some questions that you may have on your mind and didn't know where to go to get the answers. And I'm sure if you ask them, these are two young, bright gentlemen that have the answers and they want to share it with you. So welcome, David and Hayden. Aloha, Wendy. Aloha, Hayden. Wendy. Aloha, guys. Wow, you Thanks know, for you having us. On, on screen, man, look at you guys so handsome. Oh man, I, I try, Wendy. I try. <laughs> I know you don't try too hard. It's a good I shave for this one there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get started. I know that when we last spoke at the beginning of the year and we were introducing Hero and your non toxic sanitization systems and solutions, how has the community responded thus far? You know, Wendy, um, I think when we started Hero, we had had this idea that, you know, the community would be looking for it, they'd be warm, but nothing could have matched the love, the aloha, and just the, the aloha spirit that was really welcoming to us uh, when we when we entered the market. You know, we had a lot of concerned kupuna, we had a lot of people who were concerned about their keiki, but what was really amazing was not just uh, some of the vulnerable, but a lot of responsible community community leaders really stepped up to the plate and didn't just want to meet where the standard was, they wanted to exceed the standard. And, uh, you know, from, from a lot of the local restaurants that we have out there, as well as to uh, even some of uh, some big community leaders like uh, in government, uh, we had a lot of different, uh, even the Emi um, uh Center over in Big Island. I mean, we had just had a lot of people who any, any kind of uh, uh, business or, or, or church organization or NPO that had a large gathering that had a lot of people around, they were just so excited, not just to be able to provide this service, not just be able to protect their congregation or their friends or their family but their staff and their customers as well and it was just really exciting to see uh from like i said local business owners small business even big business owners uh just just heard the call and the fact that we were able to provide something to them and what was really exciting was that everyone was looking out for each other and the fact mm -hmm. that support local was so important and crucial mm -hmm. in this process was just really exciting and Gosh, it was it was uh, it was it was really uh, quite the honor to be able to serve our community and to help protect our Ohanas. Wow. Yeah, one of the things also, if I can just add to that, it's just been so great to see in the community. You know, there's just a lot of questions. A lot of people, you know, are confused. They don't they don't know about you know how how this virus you know works and where is it at in the community and what can they do to protect themselves and you know it's been a really an honor and a privilege to just to be um you know part of a, a force to to help educate the community you know to help um to help you know people just kind of have some understanding because i think once people have some understanding of what they're up against they can they can have some practical strategies and practical solutions to be able to protect themselves and to protect their community uh it's just been uh, such an honor to be out in the community to help like david said uh, i know recently we actually did a complimentary sanitization of a national prayer breakfast that was just a great thing to be uh, be a part of out here and just any way that we can to be able to reach the community to be able to educate to be able to share um, our safe and non-toxic sanitizing systems and solutions. Um, it's just been great to, to be able to help uh, provide some peace of mind uh, in the middle of a really challenging time for a lot of people. Wow, you know, uh, when I wandered into your office and I saw that disco smoke flying around, I would not ever think that that's something that is a solution to the problem that we were just experiencing and um, really wanted to know what the heck, what are we gonna do now? And so when I wandered in and I kind of listened to what you guys were saying to others, and I just kind of listened, and then you said, have a seat, and I listened, and I'm like, hmm, you know, this Auntie Wendy, we are not into chemicals, and not into all these toxins and things, and I thought, oh no, another chemical company trying to put it up my nose. But what intrigued me the most, and that's why I like having you guys on, because 
you know, when you say non-toxic sanitization solutions, I mean, like, you really mean that. So I want you just quickly to expound on what makes it non-toxic and it being a solution and being, non uh, being non-toxic. How is that even possible? Well, Wendy, you know, that's a great question. And I know uh, when we first met you and, and got to talk to you a little about our solutions, the fact that we had said that we found something that could be up to 80 times stronger than bleach, yet completely safe to pet safe, plant safe, and people safe. And the key <laughs> ingredients were salt, vinegar, and tap water. I know that <laughs> I feel like we had you at, at, at salt, vinegar, and tap water. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, <laughs> to, you know, to be able to provide something that was effective, but at the same time safe for, like I said earlier, you know, our vulnerable kapuna and our sensitive keiki, you know, that, that was something that was really uh, close to our hearts and knowing that, that when we were using something with frequency, consistency, and convenience, that I could feel good knowing that people were using our systems and solutions and it wasn't going to have any type of long-term ramifications for people. Wow. Absolutely. Amen, yeah, guys. Hey. You guys nailed it, man. Yeah, sorry, Hayden. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say also, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we've seen with COVID and, and we've come to discover over, you know, the last, like you said, 20 months is that, um, you know, COVID is trans transmitted a lot in the air, right? And that, that's, that's become really obvious in, um, in, you know, much of the research that's been done. So to be able to provide uh, a solution that, uh, you know, has nano atmospheric sanitization, we have the ability to literally occupy an airspace with something that can help disinfect the air and help keep our air safe. Um, you know, I think it's really been, uh, and do that in a non-toxic way, right? Because you can't do that uh, with, with, with toxic chemicals. So uh, it was just a, such an amazing discovery. And I know it's brought uh, so many people some safety and, uh, and peace of mind also, uh, you know, in the middle of people we know right now, um, especially with everybody starting to open up and, you know, people trying to get back together again and people being in close proximity, of course, it's more important than ever for us to be able to have safe environments, uh, you know, and, and help to, uh, to sanitize the air in a safe way. Right. And, you know, as, uh, as you said, David, you got me at vinegar, actually. <laughs> vinegar, because that's the old school remedy. You ask any uh, kupuna. Back in the day, that was the cure-all was vinegar and water. And so, again, once I saw that, I says, well, I want to learn more and understand more about what you all are doing there. So, you know, we all thought this pa pandemic was going to come and go. And now we have another variant, the Delta variant, surging. Will this virus ever end? You know, Wendy, um, I know that uh, we're here kind of having fun and, and being able to talk about things in a light manner. And, you know, it really always pains me to talk about the virus and, and where it is today. You know, we have really done as much as we can to create awareness. And gosh, what a great place to live. We live in Hawaii where people care and people uh, are, are not just thinking of themselves. They think about their neighbors. They think about their community. But the truth of the matter is we're dealing with something that a lot of experts were afraid of. Uh, we weren't sure if it was going to happen, and sure enough, it has. And really where it started from in India, you're talking about a virus that they just thought that had claimed over 400,000 souls. They are now finding out that the number might be closer to 4.1 million in India. You know, you're talking about something right now that is, that is going all across Southeast Asia. You're talking about something that's affecting us on the worldwide stage with all the way from, you know, right now they're saying Indonesia is going to be the next India. Uh, from you know countries like Taiwan and South Korea and Vietnam that had just strong protocols with with right. uh, using high tech and 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 really strong methods of sanitization, and still yet it's getting in there, and and you look at what's happening around our country right now. You know you look at uh, hospital beds being filled up. You're talking about hospitalizations rising at a rapid rate as well as case counts. And I know that you know a lot of people that I know that were in the testing field are, have uh, you know. They thought they were going to go out, out of business because testing has, has dropped so much. And now you've got a huge demand for testing. We, have, we don't have the lab infrastructure that we used to. And then now talking about uh, our islands here, you know, it's, it's, it's something very concerning, right? We've had triple digit cases for the last, uh, what was it, over 10 days now? And, you know, you, you look at where this is coming from. And a lot of people ask me, they go, David, what, what is the Delta variant? What, what, are, what are some of the key things behind it? Well, you take a look at it right now. The Delta variant, when, when someone is infected with it, sheds about 1,200% more virons than the, than the Alpha variant. On top of that, it only takes one-tenth of this virus to get people sick that, of, the ver, of, of the version beforehand. So you talk about something that's shedding more virus, plus it takes less virus to get people sick. You've got a deadly combination out there. Wow. 
Well, and we thought it was just going to come and go, and um, it'll be another thing of the past, but um, it looks like it's here for a bit. And um, knowing that there are people and companies like yourselves that are working hard to find solutions for all of us, that really gives us peace of mind and comfort. So um, I, I have to ask, you know, there's so, there seems to be so much conflicting opinions about everything when it comes to COVID. Yes, no, right, wrong, left, right, you know, how do we know what's true? Well, how do we know? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question, right? Isn't that the question that we all are asking ourselves every single day? I mean, I think one of the most frustrating things about this pandemic since the beginning is that, you know, there's just so many conflicting stories happening, right? Ever since the beginning, first it was, you know, it was a hoax and then it was just like the flu. And then we heard things were actually more significant than they were. We hear, uh, we hear all types of things about numbers and, and, you know, you know, one day, I think David just said it earlier, right? You hear 400,000 and then deaths and then you hear 4 million, you know, you hear maybe we should wear a mask one day and the next day, we shouldn't wear a mask, right? And people are fighting over this, right? And, you know, we, we hear, you know, all types of different things about vaccinations. And of course, I'm not gonna go into that today. You know, there's, there's just debates and there's all this tension, there's all this division. And I think the thing that myself and I know my partners are always so frustrated about when we think about this situation is that, you know, we see, you know, many of us were, we're fighting about, or we're arguing, we're disagreeing about all of these different uh, facts of information, you know, where did it start from? Like, what's the purpose of it? You know, there's all these, all these, uh, all this division, all this debate around it, even amongst families and amongst communities. Um, and we're fighting against ourselves. Um, but the reality is all the while, while we are fighting against ourselves, we actually have a war that's going on. We have an enemy that's not ourselves. Like we're, 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 we're on the same side. Cause you know, think about it. We all want the same thing, right? What do we want? We all want, you know, we all want our community back, right? We all want to be out. We, we don't want, none of us want to wear a mask, right? I mean, come on. Nobody wants to wear a mask, right? We all want to be out, you know, in, you know, with our, with our, you know, you know, just communities and, and public gatherings. We want to be able to just to do, we want our life back, right? Um, so we all want the same thing, but we're arguing against each other. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with so much of the disinformation out there that people are not paying attention to what, what's really going on. And, you know, David uh, did such a great job earlier talking about what's really going on. What we've seen is that we've got a virus that is changing very rapidly um, and is getting, you know, more, more virulent, right? It's trans transmitting faster, it's hitting people harder. We're hearing about kids now in hospitals, um, you know, people that are, are really being affected um, their lives being wrecked and people are shocked about what's happening because they've been just confused by disinformation. So we have an enemy. And in order for us to be able to defeat this enemy, we first need to recognize that we have an enemy, right? We, we have to agree that this is a problem. This is a problem uh, in our community. This is a problem in our world. And, um, and, and, and at least agree on that. You know, we can, we can argue about all the rest of the stuff later on, uh, but let's agree on that so that we can all come together to be able to work together to defeat this enemy. And I think that's one of the things that's so important for us at Hero. And one of the messages that we've been putting out there is that, listen, we're not about a side, we are about the same side, which is making sure that, uh, that, that as a community, we, we, we fight back and we, and we, we get our lives back. We, we beat this virus because we can't live with it. Wow, you hit it on the nail. I mean, you said as a community, we need to fight back. So it's not just you, it's not just me, it's not your neighbor, it's the community. And as long as we don't lose that, that main source called community, ohana, family, I think that's what we have to do. We all have to be working together, but yet we need the right tools to work together with. So first of all, knowledge. And so that's why I, I asked you all here so that you could inform and teach. And then of course, you have a system, a solution that mm, you would like to share with others to just give them a cutting edge over this, this uh, COVID, uh, this, this bad disease that we want to say that we want to stop it. And so touche to your company for taking it um, by the horns and working diligently on this problem. So thank you. So, you know, everything that you discussed and shared with us there, Hayden, as well as you, David, these problems seem so complex, even a little scary. I mean, not a little, actually very scary. What are we supposed to do? Can you help us? Well, you know, and I think Hayden had uh, 
really, really got us off on the right foot there with uh, the fact that we need to come together. And, you know, a big part of what Hero, you know, we, we started off as a sanitization company. We started off as this company just trying to give some new technology and to help our, uh, you know, whether whether you're a vulnerable kupuna or you're you're somebody that that maybe uh, you know you're 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 not uh, as, as a spring chicken anymore. You know, and you you you're not out there. You can't just scrub every floor or or go out there and uh, you know wash every window, right? It, it, we wanted to provide something for you that was as easy as uh, maybe a slide a slide of some sort or a push of a button. But what Hero is today is we are so much more mission focused now, and uh, really really and and what we've discovered is that it takes all of us right it, it's going to be a, a unifying effort and so what we have done to help dispel this dif disinformation what we've done to help empower people and give them education as we've uh we started an ambassador program and we call it our hero ambassador or, or hero Un heroes united and a big part of what that is about is about getting people together educating and empowering them giving them the information that they need and having them go out there and influence their communities, influence their circles of influence, influence uh, their 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 family members, their their workplaces, and that's what it really is about: is is getting people to get in front of other people and, and share with them some information. You know, it's about saying something. It's about it's about doing something. It's about activism, right? It's about being an activist. It's about going out there and and helping people. And that's really what you know. When we started this this Hero United and, and this ambassador program, is is really the core of it. Is is that education piece? And getting people to understand that it's not going to be a commercial. It's not going to be a, a radio advertisement. It's not going to be a social media pop-up ad. That's not what's going to do it. That's what got us here. You know, I, for me, I grew up in the information age where the internet had just come on. Now, don't get me wrong. Right? I'm, not, I'm not a spring chicken myself, okay? I, I remember fax machines. I remember I remember. The, <laughs> no, you don't. The, the, <laughs> you just the throw them in the rubbish can. You don't know what a fax machine is. <laughs> Okay, I, I remember, okay, and I, I also grew up with the internet, too. I grew up with all this technology, right? I Gosh, I had a phone, I think, right, I had a, uh, one of those, not, not the, the flip phone or that, that Motorola Razor, right, when I was in high school, right? So, listen, I didn't grow up on smartphone tech, okay, but I remember. I remember what it was like, and, and we, when the internet was young, you had all this information at your fingertips, and it was amazing, right? You could, something great could happen somewhere across the world. And then all of a sudden, uh, a minute later, an hour later, everybody heard about it. And that was the amazing enlightenment. And what we would call the golden age of the internet. Today, we live in the medieval times. Today, we live in a world where you don't know what to believe. Today, we live in a world where it's the disinformation age. And the sooner we all understand that, the sooner we can get past it. And we can start realizing that there are forces beyond us that are trying to divide us. That there is there is so much that is being put out there with these algorithms and these different strategies that are that are pulling us up, that are pushing us apart. And our hero mission, our hero ambassador mission, is to bring people back together again. Is to get people heart to heart, face to face, and understand that you can't hide behind a screen. You can't hide behind. I know here we are on screens right now, but you can't, you can't hide behind the screen. You can't hide behind, no, face to face, belly to belly, and really to, to communicate, discuss. And, and, and that's, the, that's the other key is discussion, right? Hearing people from their side, their point of view, and explaining to them, the, and explaining to them yours and getting that, that beautiful understanding. And I, I, I truly feel, I've, you know, I've been all across the world, Wendy, and I know, uh, Hayden, I know you have too. And I know that when you when you travel all over the place and, and you're used to meeting all types of people, that there's something magical about sitting down with someone and just having a discussion like a human being. And we want to bring more of that, obviously safely, right, with masks or with something something in the in the middle here we like to call the nano atmospheric state. But more importantly, it's it's getting people to feel that energy again and 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 to be uh, to connect again. And I think that we need to disconnect from maybe that that those screens and connect more uh, face to face. Right. Again, you hit it on the nail. And um, that's the, the feature of the Blue Zone lifestyle is that they believe in community, you know, and these seniors, these kupuna for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, every day they came out, they sat down and they talked story and they shared their lives, uh, goals and ambitions and, and, and sorrows, but they laughed and they cried together. And that's what made them so healthy and have such longevity. And that's, of course, one of the blue zones is the, in Okinawa. And I uh, studied that community a bunch. Yes, it's their diet, but it's the community that they shared 
that they could share their hearts and be there and share emotions. And that's what we need back. And so we need to work a little harder um, with you in uh, guiding us so that we can get community back. That is so, so key and so important. So I know you know what the problems are. I know you have some solutions up your sleeve. So what's the strategy to taking out COVID? How do we do it? Well, what a question there, right? I could hop in on this one. I, I think that's, <laughs> that, isn't that the question that everybody around the world is asking? And I know that we, um, you know, we, we've been really um, thinking hard about this since, uh, since day one. I, I know that you know, David said it earlier, we, we started out as a sanitization company um, and we wanted to help businesses reopen and do so with non-toxic safe solutions. And, you know, that, that was a great start. But as we've seen everything evolve uh, over the period of time, and as we've seen this virus become more and more of a problem, I think we all can kind of agree that now after we've seen this new Delta, Delta variant and what's happening, um, we ourselves um, began to get deeply concerned thinking that, what we were doing with sanitization wasn't enough. Uh, we were like, it's something, it's part of the solution, but it is not the whole solution. Um, you know, we started to look at this whole, um, this whole COVID um, situation like, like a war. It really is a, a world war that's happening. And we look around the war and, and everybody around this war is battling uh, this virus. It, it is a war that we are all against. The entire hum human race is against this war. And, you know, if you think about it, Wendy, when you are in a war, you need a wartime strategy. You, 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 you can't just think that there's this one weapon that's going to win the war, right? You need battleships, you need, you need planes, you need missiles, you need infantry, you need Marines, you need the whole thing and you need it all coordinated. You need a strategy to work together to be able to win and you need to be united too. I mean, we talk about Hero United. We can't win a war when we're all fighting against each other. We have to recognize that we're in a war, we have to unite and we have to work a strategy to be able to win that war. And when we started to think about that, we actually started to look at, you know, a, a war that actually happens inside of our body. Um, when, you know, if we look at our immune system, our immune system is a pretty interesting and amazing thing, right? It, and when, when, when you have, you know, a virus that gets inside of your body, we have a whole uh, detection system that works throughout our entire bloodstream. We have, they're called lymphocytes. And what they do is that as soon as they recognize an invader, they, they eat that invader virus and, and like blow itself up and sends off an alert to the entire body. Red alert, red alert. There's something that should not be here. We need to get it out, right? And then it sets off a whole cascade, a whole, a whole system, a whole war that happens inside of your body to get this invader out of there. Right, because if, if it doesn't happen, that, that invader, if that immune system didn't, you know, jump into action, it would it would it would shut us down. Right, it would it would end us. Mm -hmm. um, something as small as a little cut would do that. So what happens in our body? We got T killer cells that go out there and kill infected cells. We have, you know, B cells that start creating antibodies to block uh, viruses from entering in our system. Our our body heats up. That's why we get a fever, um, so that it can make it, you know, a hostile environment, so viruses can't replicate. So there is this whole beautiful symphony that happens inside of our body to be able to win this war. And so we started to ask ourselves: We're like, well, that's interesting. Our body um, is an ecosystem, right? Think about it. Our body is an ecosystem, and what else is an ecosystem? Well, this island is an ecosystem. It is. It's a body. It has, you know, all different parts. It has. You know, I guess think of each one of us as a cell. Every every human is a cell, you know? And we said, well, what would an immune system look like for the island? What if we could create an immune system here that had the ability to do exactly what the immune system does? Which, what does it do? It has a detection method. It's able to detect an invader immediately that it should not be. If we were able to de detect on the island whenever a virus was present, Let's, we need to detect it right away. Secondly, we need to alert. We need to be able to alert the community that there is a virus here. There's, there's an invader that should not be on this island. Then what we would need to do is we would need to coordinate all of our defenses. We need to coordinate defenses. What are those defenses? We talked about it, sanitizing systems, solutions, therapeutics, you know, our, our, you know, medical, everything that we need to do to be able to you know, surround and just eliminate ultimately to be able to eradicate that virus. And, 
Um, and, and that led us to this amazing idea called the Shield uh, and this amazing innovative technology that we are currently in development on right now. Um, and, and we're so excited about it because it's not just about the technology. It's about, uh, you know, Dave was saying, it's about getting the community united behind a strategy and behind a technology to be able to uh, support that strategy so that together, imagine if that, Wendy, together that we all united and we work together and just on this island, just on this island, we were able to get COVID down to zero cases and we were able to keep it there. You know, we, we started to envision that and, and, and just have that vision and think, wow, if we could do it here, it's, then, then maybe we could do it around the world, you know? And, but maybe it would start here. Maybe we could shield Hawaii. And that's the, uh, that's the initiative and, and the campaign that we're gonna be launching very soon. And we're so excited to connect with the community and, and work with the community to be able to make this happen. Wow. You know, and like you said, you go to war, you need tools, you need guns, you need artillery. And, you know, I, I went yesterday to your store and I bought this. So look at how pretty this is, guys. I mean, like, I, this is not a commercial, okay, but I just like seeing, this is just vinegar and water, a little bit of salt, putting it into the, the machine to change its uh, structure, molecular structure. And this, to me, is my peace of mind when I'm shopping, when I'm traveling, when I'm going out to eat, I just do this. And you know, I tell you what's really funny. I go around town and I, I was at the Mercedes Benz, the car dealership. This lady brings out her gun and she like, she's like spraying her car down right in front of me. I'm thinking like, hey girlfriend, <laughs> I know what that is. I says, you're a hero too. And yeah, so she just picked up her car, was worked on. So before she went in, she sprayed it down the trunk, the car, the mat, everything she sprayed it down with her gun her hero gun and she sanitized it and made it a safe place for her and her husband to jump into as they were on their journey back home and so i just put her aside and say hey what is that and she goes oh you don't know and um she was explaining to me like oh, i have to do this whenever i go and i put in my car all over and she was so excited I, and i just pretend like i didn't know what she's talking about but she was so passionate and she knew what she had to do because her car was in strangers hands and now it's her and her husband going back into their car their home on the road and she had to make it the best and safest place for them to to spend the next uh, what 10, 15, 30 minutes in. And she says, when I go home, I use this, I do everything. I make sure I gun him down, <laughs> gun him down. <laughs> She's only gone, they were really? So yeah, she sprayed him in, and then he does her too. So he gunned her down, you know? And so it was a reciprocation. And you know what? One more form of communication for husband and wife, because in the past they probably would just walk into their house. But Anyway, so sorry, going off track. So you say rise up, join the fight and be a hero. What does that really mean? And what can we all do? You know, Wendy, I love that question because a lot of people ask us, David, what does being a hero mean to you? What does being a hero mean to, to, to your company? And really what it means is it means making a statement. It means saying to yourself, I'm going to be a hero. Uh, maybe, it, maybe it's a hero in your family. Maybe it's being a hero with your friends. Maybe it means being a hero at your workplace. Maybe it means being a hero uh, uh, in your community. What we're saying is that we need more heroes today. And whether it's, it's through our ambassador program or not, we want you to be the best. Uh, what, what is, we want you to be a superhero in your community. And whether that's saying something and saying, hey, listen, that's not responsible or saying, hey, listen, let's not drink from the same cup or hey, listen, let's, 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 let's mask up before we go in here. Let, or listen, hey, where's your mask at? It's, it's being a hero and saying something and not just saying something, but doing something. And right wow. now we need more heroes. We need more heroes everywhere. We need more heroes. We're gonna find them and we're gonna or we're gonna find friends and turn them into heroes. So we don't want all the credit. We want them to be a part of the solution. So I'm so sorry, but we run out of time right now, guys. So mahalo to you two young heroes. And of course the other partner in crime is Dustin, I know. And thank you for bringing the solutions to us and helping to help us understand this little, uh, a little clearer. So we appreciate you so much. And one day uh, soon we'll have you back when you develop more tools that you wanna share with us. But for now, thank you from Think Tech Hawaii and taking your health back. I'm Wendy Lowe and we will see you in the next two weeks. Aloha and mahalo young men for joining us today. Aloha.